welcome to this week's edition of Vola TV. I'm Barry Wright, and this is Matthew Boyle, our head teacher at the Academy. Hi, Barry. How are you? I'm very well, yes. Strange circumstances, but very well. Good. Uh, thank you for joining me on uh, this week's Vola TV. Last week, we tried to make a virtual assembly, but we got feedback from people that uh, since it's really for the parents in our community as well as our uh, students, it's not really an assembly anymore. It's uh, it's something that's for, for everyone. So <laughs> most people uh, like the idea of us just calling it Vola TV. So that's the reason in case people think we're getting ideas above our station, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so a lot going on um, still in the school. I, I know that we're not in the building, but um, we're still a virtual school and there's, there's lots of work going on. And, and the first thing I want to talk to you about was that uh, tremendous bit of news about our S2 student, Callum, and his wee brother, Sam, and the rugby challenge that they were involved in that, that seemed to get an awful lot of interest. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know much of the detail, but uh, it's always lovely when you see something go viral. Uh, they obviously come up with a, a, an innovative idea, and uh, I believe the Scotland rugby manager has got uh, got wind of it and has been uh, giving it some some props, as the Americans say. Another rugby pun there, accidentally, Barry. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm just delighted for them. I think it's fantastic because it's the kind of positive, you know, don't just sit around waiting for something to happen attitude that 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 we would love our students to have. So really exciting. It's great. Well done, guys. It's fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, Gregor Townsend, the Scotland manager that you were talking about there, and uh, I believe a, a former international and a current international also commented on it. I think it was 14,000 views it had in total. That's incredible. And that's probably up till we read the article midweek. Mm -hmm. So that's right. we, maybe way beyond that now. So yeah. that's just, it's yeah. just fantastic. Really uh, some, go viral. Uh, some, some sad news, of course, as well. Yeah, that's right. We, we, we learned this week about the sad death of our, our renowned former pupil, Lynn Foldswood. Yeah, and uh, what, what, what made me um, thoughtful about this is when I was a boy, obviously I'm a little older than, than many in our school, uh, um, I remember watching Watchdog, one of the very early consumer affairs programmes. It really was the trailblazing British programme for that. And Lynn Foldswood was one of the, the first presenters of it and certainly one of the, the, the most recognised. And I honestly didn't know that she was a former student of Fail of Leaving Academy. So mm. it, it's made me, first of all, sad that you know the, the community's lost her. She had a stroke, apparently, in uh, I think she was 71 just, just this week. Yeah, and uh, that that uh, we don't know how many other really interesting careers and and people there are out there that have been, you know, part of the Vela Leaving Academy history. So uh, I'd love to hear a bit more and and to learn a bit more. It's made me feel a little ignorant of the school that I'm now so proud to be part of. Uh, in terms of um, uh, safety. Yeah, we've got, yeah. Uh, you know, during lockdown, we've all we've all got to do our bit, and uh, it was lovely to see the teachers all roll their sleeves up and be part of the the photo collage that that Miss Palin put together, uh, asking people to you know to just dig in, uh, stick with it a bit longer, and stay in, stay safe. You know, um, mm -hmm. apparently our S five and S six students have been up to it as well now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So we've got we've got a couple of collages that, that staff have uh, um, pulled together, and uh, this latest one uh, from a number of our pupils. But I guess the, the key message that comes out of that is just that, that our pupils are, are you know taking that civic responsibility so seriously. You know, they, they they're taking taking care of the the fact that they've got to stay indoors, and that's not easy for anyone. But um, they're taking it seriously, and and they're really setting a good example, not just um, not just within their families, but within their communities and across the school. And, and there's something more to this, uh, Barry, because because the, there's a the belief out there among some people that the students that are working online and at home are somehow disengaged and you know not necessarily really tuned into what we're doing. But I happen to know that that was that was uh, Mrs. Palin putting out the call through our online systems, saying to to our, uh, our seniors, you know, we'd love to do this, and within I believe two days. All of the students had gone and made the effort to get a photograph of themselves holding the, you know, the the, the, mm -hmm. the allocated word, and and there was a virtually a zero, you know, no show on this. So that's how engaged our, our, our students uh, are online. Uh, it's, yeah. it's something we should be really proud of and thank them for. It's wonderful. 
absolutely. <laughs> Talking and that, about that, that leads on. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, leads on a, um, a lot of the work that Miss Hughes has been doing, the, the principal teacher curriculum leader of English, um, and picked out some some really impressive bits of work that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, just on exactly that topic, we want every week to uh, to try and showcase some some of the, the the wonderful work that's happening because it's pouring in. I know some of our students are worrying as we're not doing as much online as we would wish, but the you know the bulk of our students are doing a fabulous job just now of keeping their education intact. Uh, and uh, she's put up a couple of pieces of work um, which we'll showcase at the end, but it's uh, it's book review and summaries, but with the the, the whole desktop publishing and formatting in them. Beautiful work, really great care taken, and an example of the the reading newsletter from the English department, which is edited by one of our S three students. That's right, uh, well, just yeah, absolutely, but yeah, just just wonderful. So you can have a quick look at those, uh, and uh, we're we're so proud of uh, our students' work in that. Absolutely, and and on that note, um, w w one of the things that you wanted to announce today was a, a competition um, to to design a logo for for Vola TV. Absolutely. Uh, when people see our first edition of Vola TV, I suppose it's our second go really, um, they're going to see a standard black background with white writing saying Vola TV, you know, communicating with our community or something like that. It's not really what we want. We want something that's from our students, that's uh, that's catchy, you know, um, uh, inspiring, you know, a logo. It just needs to be a still picture that we can use as the as the the, the title board for our program. Vola TV. What does it mean to you? What does it look like? And if someone can get one to us within the next week, then we will give a twenty five pound Amazon voucher to that winner, and uh, certainly they'll be credited for it. And uh, there'll be a really good chance for them to show some some of the creativity that that, that we know uh, we've got so much of within the school. And, and talk, <laughs> talking about that creativity, uh, Matthew, the the, um, the appeared today in our on our Facebook page. But um, Caitlin, a primary seven pupil at, at Christie Park, and her big sister Bronwyn, who is um, one of her S six pupils, and absolutely fantastic rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I, I wanted to showcase this. Um, there are one or two students as well who are in our partner primary schools uh, uh, who are involved in this work as well. Unfortunately, the the uh, videos are on YouTube and uh, you can't download these videos. That, that I think they're uh, locked off to you know administrators only. So uh, the way to see those is not to watch Fola TV this week, but to go on to the uh, Vale of Leaven Academy Facebook page, where I believe they're, they're they're available to see, and they're very uplifting, very inspiring. So we'll maybe come back to 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 some more about the musical life of the school in the next edition. And we've had a few questions from uh, parents this week, Matthew. Um... And one of, one, of, one of the first questions that we've had is, are pupils being given enough work to do? Uh, it's a, a really important question. And uh, although that's a formal question uh, after uh, me inviting questions last week, um, it's one that we've had for a few weeks beforehand, both ways. You know, why, why is my child getting too much work, drowning in work? And a few uh, have, have indicated not enough work. The answer is, uh, is a short one. Um, uh, we will adjust the work. You know, our, our teachers are trying hard to get it right, and not everyone has the same needs. Some people are struggling to to find time and space to work at home. Others are are, are lapping it up with a big spoon and and desperate for more. Um, so so uh, we know there is a lot of work available. In fact, we know that uh, when we've uh, put phone calls through to parents to support them and explained all the work that's available, we've had a lot of students, you know, red faced in the background, going, "Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Um, oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't remember that." or I haven't mentioned, oh, was I supposed to do that? You know, quite a few parents have realised there's a lot more work than, than, than we realise. However, we do take it seriously, and if more is needed, we'll find more. Uh, the, the way to deal with this is get in touch with, with the pastoral care team at the school, and uh, that, that's uh, information available on our school website uh, very easily uh, available. Yeah. One other question, and I think, I think it's a real hot topic at the moment, um, but when are schools going to reopen? Yes, um, a really important question. First of all, we don't have the answer to that. We wish we did, but uh, we have um, best guesses, that's all. The Cabinet Secretary for Education, John Swinney, has made it clear, uh, probably last weekend, I think, roundabout, wasn't it, that, that we should not expect schools to open uh, this side of the summer holiday. 
in this world just now things can change rapidly so no one's saying that's a certainty but as a guideline it doesn't look like we'll open before the you know the, the end of the summer holiday even then there have been some indications uh, from government level that uh, it's it's possible that that schools may open with you know phasing uh, of return or uh, you know or some different arrangements we simply don't know but at this point uh, i think i've shared all that we can say about that mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we invite more questions every week. Any questions, we'll do our best to answer. So the address to send those inquiries to uh, is schoolofficevola at westdunbarton.gov.uk. That's schoolofficevola at vola at westdunbarton.gov.uk. So Barry, uh, we're going to finish off now. Uh, thanks for uh, helping me through this summary of uh, where we are this week. And we're going to pass on now to our colleague. Life just now is very different from usual. You'll be missing lots of the things that you usually enjoy. Everyone is rightly thinking about health and hygiene and safety. I hope you're finding some positives about shutdown, but I know that a lot of you will be finding it difficult. If you're feeling the strain, try to find an adult that you know and trust to whom you can talk about how you're feeling. And even though school is closed, you can still contact your pastoral care teacher. Their email address is on the school website. When you open the website, go to Supporting Students at the bottom of the menu on the left of your screen. Then click on Student Wellbeing. There's lots of useful information there. You'll find links to Childline and to Young Scott with loads of ideas about how to stay safe and get through the COVID crisis. There's a list of useful numbers and apps for all sorts of situations. If you click on mental health, you'll find two kinds of support. You can self-refer to our own counselling service. Our pupil counsellor is providing phone counselling to pupils of all ages. If you're age 16 or above, have a look at the Big White Wall. That's a new mental health resource for young people aged 16 to 24. It's free and it's available 24-7. There's advice on online safety through a link to the Think You Know website. And there are advisors there if there's anything that's making you feel uncomfortable or unsafe online. And under contacting pastoral care, you'll see how to get in touch with your pastoral care teacher. The pastoral care teachers have already spoken to lots of parents and pupils since school closed and they're keen to help. Do your best to be active during the day. Push yourself if it feels right, but not if it makes you more anxious. At night, switch off all your devices and try to get a good sleep. If you're finding it difficult because of loss or anxiety, it is important to talk to somebody that can help. If you would like, to get in touch with your pastoral care teacher, please do so. You're part of a school that cares about how you are and how you feel, and your pastoral care teacher is there to help. The English department are continuing to work hard on their goal of building a reading culture and improving students' literacy skills even if remotely. Students have been finding creative ways to share their current reading, such as using Google Slides to visually represent their favourite books. We've seen some fantastic examples of slideshows from students, which have provided both students and teachers with ideas for the next read. We also have a dedicated classroom for reading recommendations called Vola Reads, and our own reading newsletter. We have all been delighted to see that our students are continuing to read. Not only is this a fantastic way to develop literacy skills, but it also provides some much needed escapism.